Greetings, adventurers, travelers, and fellow keepers of the lake. It's your perpetually tired and overworked uh, young man of a host, constantly thinking about stories and other worlds and creative things, crafts, and stuff, while being stuck in the capitalistic hells of the earth we live in. Let's talk about something different. Some would say this is blasphemy, but let's talk about cooperating with your players as a DM. Some are very, very, very tight to the idea that you shall not break the illusion of the game being all in your head. Like some of the people I watch online, they go into these power trips where they almost feed on the, the fact that they seem so knowledgeable that like they are holding the knowledge about the whole world, about everything, about anything that happens, they have it prepped, they have it written down. And that's that's the difference. Like, do you have a, a, a systematic way to produce, like to generate more of your authentic world in your head on the fly, or do you have it written down? I know that there is a, a group of people that are very, very, very strict on like, yeah, I have it all written down. This, these are the, the NPCs, the things that exist. And they, uh, they will not break character, they will not admit to not knowing something, even out of the game. And I kind of respect that, but um, for me personally, I then feel like the players, and, and this is only uh, by numbers, because I have only uh, ever played D&D mostly with people that haven't played D&D before. Mostly new, newer people get like uh, the idea that the DM is the only storyteller here. You are the one who creates the world. And and this is very wrong. And, and most of you will agree that this is very wrong. Like, uh, we are just arbiters. We are just uh, some rules lawyers, basically. We're not like there to push the story and, and like manifest the story. We are more like a scaffold for the story to develop through our players. Now, sometimes for certain systems, for certain situations, you might go into like a linear mode, but inside that linear mode, it's like a ball, a bouncy ball that you throw into a tunnel. It can only go straight, but it will it can bounce off the walls and, and create like chaotic, intricate patterns. So the same thing with players, you can give them like a linear path, but they can still uh, have certain freedom inside that path. So they are the the main storytellers right something that started manifesting be it through that um rivalry that starts when you and the players both uh, start learning the game at the same time and you come from maybe competitive gaming or something like that as, as a background uh if something like that happens you will constantly be fighting with your players about uh can we do this or can't we? I hate the scenario where the players think they're rivals with the Game Master and from an environment that was very like that, there was this switch where for some reason they started helping in developing the story, helping with the details. For example, be it that they were tired of me uh, thinking like for a couple of seconds about the NPC name uh, it, when they meet some random NPC on the on the street. So they started throwing names at me and sometimes they're cool names, sometimes they're meme names, but we write them down and this is now a uh, integral part of the story. Then they really liked that, that they can name NPCs and that they can name like small things in the world. They really, really, really enjoyed it. And that was the turning point where from rivals, they understood that they are now storytellers. And from there, they actually started like narrating some of the things that they see when they enter a location, maybe some small things. And also we incorporated the luck roll from Call of Cthulhu in some ways. We are rolling it same as a flat roll in Pathfinder 2e. And with that luck roll, they can manifest some things in the world that are like not that important they weren't they won't impact the the greater like power balance of the world or anything like that but they are like a small mini game for the players to 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 actually like enhance some of the rp moments and become the storytellers themselves then the next step is that the players actually started like helping me decide what the dcs for some things are combat aside if we are doing some uh, task some skill role for example like jumping over a wild uh nest of, I don't know, worms with horns, whatever. Sometimes I would like sit and think about it and I would 
say okay roll the dice and they are willing to negotiate i know what some of you would say like why would you negotiate you're the arbiter as soon as you give them the ability to fix their roles they will try to do it for everything well kind of yes we do have uh, a couple of situations where the player goes above and beyond to to try and um, bargain for that but that's fixed for us if you want to bargain over my first no then you need to invest an inspiration token next like elevation of this concept that happened in our group is where i have mistakenly uh, thought that my players are gonna follow a, a very very small rail railroad like just like an intro almost cinematic to to entering the scenario that's uh, in call of cthulhu where one of the players was left like idle for a couple of hours basically i know horrible dming but he was idle and what he started to doing is actually role-playing other characters like other npcs around the town like the driver maybe a receptionist things like that and wow does that help the dm out like if they're going to one location to the other and they want to role play with the, the cab driver if you have a pc that's not there and he wants to do it let him do it that that's amazing like uh they're still building the world and you have time to prepare for the next scene and it, it has so many benefits but if all of your players are engaged at that moment in the same party and at the same place this doesn't work of course um but i think there is a fundamental shift in like how we look at storytelling and how we look at each other where the walls are down, we see each other as collaborators, we are all playing the same game. For me, this is beautiful. So yeah, I won't like go into any like higher philosophy, I just wanted to share like how step by step we came to this almost beneficial metagaming thing that we are doing. I know this is not for everyone, this is like very on the edge uh, of like what RP is, I guess, from what I've seen uh, other people do so far. Maybe you find something that's interesting for you. Maybe your group is like this and you would like to like dissolve these boundaries and, and be like closer in this way. I don't like the feeling of like being the almighty condescending being at the table. I really want there to be like equal level of like authority when it comes to creating the story but just keep the authority that's uh, around the final say about the rules and what's possible and what's not. Well, anyways, that's just uh, a couple of things that were going through my head uh, today and I wanted to share. There is just so many things that I'm working on at the moment and I know that I've been posting like irregularly. I have like maybe four or five videos that are being edited at the same time. It's wild. Uh, also, I have done a ton of programming on the soundboard uh, program. I will be releasing the new version of that 0.0.4. Maybe it's even released depending on when you watch. But yeah, um, I can't promise that I will do like this type of content or that type of content. So for you to subscribe, uh, there is a ton of ideas that I have and I maybe won't be doing this forever like this. Mostly what is interesting to me at, at this point and if you enjoy what I'm rambling about so far, hey, maybe we have an overlap in interests. I plan to do more TTRPG stuff, that's for certain. Uh, like the next 10 to 100 videos will certainly be tied to storytelling, TTRPGs, crafting and all that stuff. But you never know, maybe something else also finds a way here. So if you like uh, what this hairy dude is uh, rambling about, subscribe and yeah, become the, the member of the Order of the Barlow Keep. Why not? Join my cult. It's a good cult. I mean, it's not a cult, but if I say that, you'll just say that every cult says that they're not a cult. So I just freely say, uh, join my cult. Thank you so much for watching Stranger from the Internet. As always, keep on going, keep on loving, keep on being creative, play more D&D, go outside a bit, it's, it's uh, such a nice weather. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. Farewell.